Let's try this again. Now, this is the Sky CPX2. For those of you that may remember or seen the review I did last year, I believe it was maybe the day before or a few days after Christmas, I had done a review on these. I had been looking for these for a long time because they just, they're not usually up around here in Connecticut. Let's put it that way. Um, and when they are, or if you want to order one, they're expensive. You know, something that you would be buying normally for, we'll say, $249, $269 would be, you know, $399, $459. I mean, that's, that's the difference um, here in Connecticut. Uh, so anyway, let's get off of that for a minute. I bought one because I wanted, I like the size. <clears throat> The reviews were mesomez, but you, you can't always trust reviews because it depends upon the shooter as well. You know, the, how often they use it, what are they using for ammunition. And you know, there's a lot, of, a lot of things that can cause problems, even the way that the shooter holds the firearm. Um, you know, so at that point, you know, as far as being too tight on it, not too tight as far as grip, which you don't want a tight grip anyway, but they lock up so much on it that the, the firearm can't move. Um, and if it doesn't have a chance to recoil, it's not going to work. And that's what was happening to, on some of the reviews. But anyway, I bought it for the wife for, for Christmas, and I don't remember what Christmas it was. I had given it to her the day after or the following day we went to the range uh, she put about I don't know 50 rounds through I really couldn't tell you I don't remember again I there's no need to remember to be honest with you at this point um, but she enjoyed it and she did really good with it and she liked it then I tried it well actually I put like six rounds through it first just to see how it was going to be and then I took it from her and I and I shot a few rounds through it, you know, box or so. <clears throat> and it was working fine, had no problems with it. And I said, what a nice gun. Why aren't they selling these things up here? You know, um, so when I got back, I decided I was going to call the gun shop, which I did the following day that they were open. <coughs> and I ordered another one for 250 bucks, by the way, which was a deal. Uh, for Connecticut, that was a deal. 250 bucks. I ordered another one, 250 bucks. I'm keeping one for myself. I was going to carry it, which I was, and it's a nice carry piece. You know, it's a good size. It fits my hand nice. I like the way it felt. It seems to have been functioning properly. But then when I started going and, and using it a little bit more when I went to the range, uh, I found that it started to have some hiccups. It uh, always didn't, it didn't want to extract. And if it doesn't extract, it's definitely not going to feed. <clears throat> and we had a few issues. I said, well, maybe it's the ammo. I'll work it out. Now, as a rule, I do not like gun, um, guns that are ammo sensitive. If it doesn't shoot whatever it tells, if it says a nine millimeter, I want it to shoot whatever nine I happen to put in it. Because if there's a problem getting ammunition, I may not be able to get that ammunition, that brand, that kind, that type. So does that mean that, okay, it shoots nine millimeter, but it'll only shoot, uh, uh, we'll say Winchester, white box. Uh, you know, so what happens if there's tons of 9mm on the shelf, but there's no Winchester white box. You follow? So that's that's kind of the problem. So I don't like firearms <coughs> that are ammo sensitive. And I won't get rid of a firearm 
if I feel there's a problem with it or if I don't like it, I'll eat it and I'll keep it. And I'll, well, I, then I start using it for training with students because if it's going to screw up, I'd rather see it screw up with a student as long as it's safe because then I can instruct the student as to what to do if there's a screw up. Because if the firearm doesn't screw up when you're teaching them and they're out in the field and it screws up, they're not going to know what to do and therefore they may panic and become unsafe. So I had a few guns purposely screwed up so that I know I messed up the magazines on them <coughs> so that they would screw up. However, let's get off of that for a minute. So I bought one for myself and I was carrying it, uh, liked it, had no problems with it, uh, but after a few trips to the range with it, now I don't go to the range purposely to shoot. I may do that once, twice, three times a year. Um, I'm into guns, it's a hobby of mine, but I, I, I don't, it's not in my veins, all right? I don't sleep it, drink it, eat it, um, you know, I, I may carry one. You don't see me carrying 10 different guns and 100 different magazines strapped around me. I mean, I just that's not me. But when I go to the range to give classes, sometimes I'll get there a little early and I'll go on the range and I'll pop off a few rounds. So in the interim of doing all this, this gun started to screw up. Um, and it seems like it, it started to screw up a little bit more and more to a point where it says, I'm not going to carry it. You know, you screw up once, uh, all right. But when you start screwing up twice, well, then you're not a carry gun, in my opinion. <clears throat> so I decided to use it as a training tool. So that's what it's been. Now, the wife's gun has, it has quite a few through it. I'm, I'm going to, I don't know. Again, I, I, I forget the, you know, 1,000 rounds, 3,000 rounds, somewhere around there. I don't know. However, that gun is uh, the first one. Um, that gun, the uh, it only goes with um, high-end defense ammo, <clears throat> and she keeps it at her nightstand, you know, and... <clears throat> and that's basically it. But when we do use it, like I say, we were using it quite a bit there for a while. Um, it was working fine. So we have no problems with her so far. However, we may change that out. This one is starting to screw up big time. It's now getting to the point to where if I put a magazine in throughout that 10 rounds, it is going to screw up. Now the first 10 may be fine, but it seems like once the gun starts to warm up a little bit, that's when it starts to happen. <coughs> so when you put a magazine in and you let go of 10 rounds, if you can get through the last one, you put the next mag in, you're going to have a problem about every three or four rounds. That is not for me that's not quality control that's not a good gun <clears throat> now again the wife's gun is totally different for some reason hold on a minute guys and I have to apologize for the throat clearing and the coughing and that uh, some days it's just worse than others um, you know the the they're blaming it on, I don't know what they call it. We call it, you know, nasal drip, post-nasal drip, whatever you want to call it. Um, the ear, nice and throat doctor says, if it was nasal drip, it'd be pouring out of the front of your nose. Right? Well, then what is it? <laughs> yeah. So, but anyway, uh, I have to, again, apologize for that. That's where we're at with this. So I use it with the students because I know that it's going to screw up, which gives me an opportunity to instruct them as to what to do if it screws up. Because the first thing they want to do, and if you're an instructor, I'm not picking on anybody here, 
but you may want to make sure that you have a screw-up gun because if you pay attention to your student the first thing he's going to do when this gun screws up is one of these things it starts getting away from down range <clears throat> it starts coming off target it goes up it goes sideways it, you know it, you know I mean it, it, and I would say 70% of my students would do that some of them just don't know what to do and they freeze which that's better than nothing that's better than doing this stuff you know um, you know, like they're trying to look at the outside of the gun to see, okay, what what happened? You know what I mean? <clears throat> so so it's good to have a few guns that are going to screw up so you can get them through this. However, <clears throat> this gun is getting to be a real pain in the ass. So much so that I, I don't trust it anymore, other than just that. And it, it was so bad the other day, to be honest with you, that... I actually, after it screwed up a few times, I had to take it away from the student and give them another firearm because they couldn't get enough rounds off with this thing without it screwing up to, to enjoy or to, you know, hit paper. So, you know, I would say, okay, that was just a training gun. All right, and we take it away and I give him another 9mm that, that's going to work. So, because of that, I, 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 as much as I thought this was going to be a great gun, and this is like a year, year and a half later review, um, this particular gun uh, is, is a nightmare. And even though the wife's gun is working fine, she doesn't use it as much as I do. It sits in a nightstand, and again, it's got some good high-end defense ammo in it, and you know, and, and things like that. And she cleans it. And, um, I don't know if I'm going to trust it with that either. Um, so we're going to see what happens. So I'm going to call Sky, and I'm going to let them know exactly what this thing is doing, because again, it's. If you can't put 10 rounds through it without it screwing up each time, that is not a gun you're going to want to own. 250 or not. So, now for a training tool, uh, that's what I'm using it for. I, I cannot trust this firearm as a defense piece anymore. So, and uh, it's giving me second thoughts on the wife's gun, which is the same one. Um, that is working without problem. Then the the sight, the dot popped off. Now it has use on it. But I'll tell you what, this has nowhere near the use on it than my other ones that they train with and that I shoot a lot. And they're still working flawlessly. So right now, uh, after this year later review uh, and after a lot of usage, I, I, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna condemn this piece until I find out more about it. So I I, pos I could not recommend it to you today um, uh, the way it's working. Now when I first bought them and I put a few thousand rounds through them and they were working fine, I said they were working fine. I told you just how it was. I bought one, I liked it, it ran right. I bought another one, they both run great. And that's the way it was. I told you like it was at the time. <clears throat> now I'm telling you like it is. A year later, and after some usage, uh, it, it, it's just not a gun that uh, I would trust. And again, I with the wife who keeps it in the nightstand, it's even one that I don't even trust as that. Because why is she keeping it in the nightstand? for emergency defense and if something happens to it it's just like carry you carry in it it's same thing you need it for emergency you need it for defense you need it and with this one acting up like it is i don't know if the other one is going to start acting up or not and i don't want to find out in a case of where we may need it so i think i'm going to uh 
take hers out of there and use it as a training tool as well and, and buy her another 9 or even a 380. Uh, if I can find another Browning Double Action 380 stainless, that's what I'll buy her because that's a nice piece. I have one that's nickel and it's like 35 years old and I haven't had any issues with it at all other than mine's nickel and some of the nickel started chipping off the bottom of the frame. <clears throat> Alright, let me get these cleaned.